Yes, it's really sad to say it, but we've grown accustomed to fishing with plastic. And with that, I'm not referring to plastic baits, but plastic washing up all over the show. Being on the beaches, this has become a normal picture. The sad part of this is through the lockdown period in 2020, we saw some pristine beaches again without the interaction of human beings. Morning guys and girls, um, one of those really good steps in the right direction. Over the last couple of months and for Yonks actually, we have seen so many people not really have a consideration for our beaches and environment, making a mess everywhere. Now, the surf, Clean Surf Project launched by Tequini is really an initiative in the right direction and uh, by Sapphire Coast also being involved with that and then obviously the support of Coca-Cola now we're here with Jace Cavender and the Manzum Toti where they're going to run us through the project and today there's a whole bunch of people that's going to start this whole beach cleanup project and uh, big big heads up to them uh, for this initiative and really guys it starts with you as an individual on the beach the individual out there in the environment just to clean up off to yourself and uh, even it will do you no harm picking up something else that's lying around on the beaches or where it shouldn't let it become a culture in our country let's keep south africa clean I want to call to all anglers to have that responsibility to keep every area you use clean afterwards. To minimize any chance of plastic ending up in our oceans, it really doesn't take much to have a little bag with you to clean around the area regardless if it's your mess. Or should you be using anything plastic orientated, drinks or whatever it may be to just make sure you put it in the packet and take it with you to dispose of it in a dustbin. It comes down to every person. <coughs> Amanzim Toti is one of those examples with some key players that took the initiative and involved several people that could make this possible. Minister, I'm lost for words, let me see, it's, it means a great deal to me to have you all here. Several speakers shared their opinion and take on how to make a difference as well as Minister Barbara Creasy herself, having a very interesting take. Now personally, I don't think you can have much self-respect if you do not respect the environment, other people and areas around you. And it starts with you. Yes, we can point in every direction, but this guy, but those people, but this area. And yes, there are much bigger problems than anglers leaving rubbish on the beach that causes the bigger problem of plastic on our beaches and in the ocean. But that doesn't matter. It starts with every individual to make a difference. And let the guys in a Manzum Toti be example to everybody, taking the initiative to launch clean up projects that will really make a difference in the area. Managing to get the support of rather big sponsors or funders to make this happen. The Clean Surf project, as launched by Ikalini and Sapphire Coast, is a result of some individual persistence, caring enough about our beaches to make a difference. Azevin went to have a listen and a look, and must commend the efforts of 
everybody involved. Minister Barbara Crease herself attended the event and had a very interesting take on how we can improve the bigger picture. Allow me to recognize our program director, Reverend Andrew Manning, my sister and my fellow eco-warrior, the MEC for Economic Development, Tourism and the Environment, MEC Nomusa, Dobe and Mobe, our councillor who chairs the Economic and Development Planning Committee in the city of Eteguini, Councillor Sipo Kayonda, our very energetic eco-warrior here in Amazon Toti, Councillor Andre Bietcha. Let me also acknowledge, you know, in government policy we say the polluter must pay. So let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, and acknowledge the polluters who pay. Uh, it's Mr. Michael Tolo, Mr. Anton Hanakom, and of course uh, Dr. Sakado, who is representing Sasol. All of these are good polluters, they pay. Uh, let me also acknowledge uh, Mr. Denzel van der Westhuizen and all of you who have put so much time and so much energy into the launch of Inquazi Isu here in Amans and Toti this morning, as well as all of our hard-working public service members from national government, from provincial government, from the city of Eteguini, and all of you ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic to be here. At, uh, you know, today is International Coastal Cleanup Day, so it's fantastic to be here. I'm in, under lockdown, I was a citizen of Gauteng. I've really missed the sea. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> I had a swim this morning. <laughs> for the first time in six months, it was fabulous. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what we know is that 80% of plastic waste that lands up in our oceans doesn't come from the sea. It comes from the land. And that, as we have seen from this jar this morning, a vast percentage of this plastic is what we call single-use plastic. It's used once and never again. And what does all this plastic do? Well, the first thing it does is it's interfering with our marine life. South Africa has 3,000 kilometers of coast, fishing, if you looked at the GDP figures that came out recently, fishing was one of the only sectors that added to growth of our economy in the previous quarter. And our fish, our birds, our sea mammals are all being destroyed by this plastic. Some people say that by 2050 there will be more plastic in South Africa's oceans than there will be fish. The second thing that this plastic does is it destroys our ecosystem services. So what are ecosystem services? Nature does wonderful things for free. We spend huge amounts of money developing stormwater systems, flood abatement systems, ways to store water in case of drought, but nature does all of that for free. We have wetlands that absorb runoff, we have wetlands that store water for tough times, we have wetlands that provide uh, important nutritional capacity for our ecosystems, we have estuaries that are nurseries and breeding grounds for our fishes, and what are we doing? We're covering them with nappies and plastic bottles so that they can't provide the natural function that they're supposed to be performing. And lastly, and equally importantly, this plastic waste is going to destroy our tourism economy. 
And we understand that the COVID pandemic has created all sorts of economic problems for us. We all want to get back to work. We all want to get our economy moving again. We all want to make sure that this Christmas season is going to be a good season for tourism here in KwaZulu-Natal. But if tourists have to sit on beaches that are covered by three feet of plastic, they'd rather go somewhere else. Now, why does this happen? Well, the first reason it happens is because we have weaknesses in municipalities with regard to the collection of waste. So, only 60% of households in South Africa have got weekly refuse removal. About 10% have got on and off refuse removal and 30% don't have any removal, household removal at all. So we can criticize people who dump illegally, but if you didn't have weekly refuse removal, you'd also dump illegally. The second reason why we have this problem is this issue of single-use plastics. There are new products. There are new bases for earbuds. There are new products, wood products, for takeaway knives and forks and spoons. There are new kinds of straws. And I think that those are some of the things that we have to be looking at. And the last thing, of course, is just consumer behavior. So we got the takeaway, we finished, open the car window, chuck it out, who cares? Uh, we don't have to have it messing up the car anymore. So what are the solutions? So the first solution is that we have to work with municipalities as provincial and national government, MEC, to strengthen collection. We have to make sure that slowly and incrementally more and more households have weekly collection. At national government level we are working with municipalities across the country to build landfills that are compliant with regulations. We have also worked with National Treasury to make sure that the Municipal Infrastructure Grant can be used to buy trucks that can do the collection. Because it doesn't help if you have an infrastructure grant but you don't have money to collect. But we do need to strengthen compliance and we do need to deal with people who dump illegally. So there must be carrots, but we need to tighten up on the sticks. The second thing that we're doing is what we call the extended producer responsibility. So the old idea about producers was they found resources and the world in the old days was full of resources and they made things and when we finished using those things we chucked them away. And now what we understand is that the resources of the world are not infinite. And that as we move into the 22nd century with billions of people, we are going to have to give resources a second life. And what that means is that those who use resources in the first life have to come to the party to think about how those resources will be used in the second life. And that's what we mean by extended producer responsibility. You don't just make a plastic bottle because you are selling water and what happens to that plastic bottle afterwards is none of your business. It's now your business what happens to that plastic bottle. It has to be reused, it has to be recycled, it should not end up in a landfill and it definitely must not land up in our water system, in the beaches or on the sea. So as government we have in the last 
couple of months, been working together with Plastics SA to put out what we call a Section 18 Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme. And the idea of that scheme is that all producers, not just the good ones like Sassol and Coke and uh, some of the big retail stores who are well behaved and responsible, but all producers have to belong to a scheme, they have to make a voluntary contribution to that scheme, and they have to be involved in thinking about what happens to their products through the whole of the value chain, from the first life to the second life, and the third life, and the fourth life, and so on and so forth. And they can't duck out anymore and leave their responsibility to somebody else, like you good folk. And then the third thing that we have to do is that we've got to work on community behavior. So I had uh, an interesting WhatsApp message from someone in the team in my office who arrived here yesterday and took photos of the beach and the plastic pollution on the beach. And he sent me the photos and he said, I really got upset this morning when I saw what was happening on the beach. And, uh, you know, we come from the Department of Finance uh, because I was an MEC in Karting before and we moved from finance to environment. And as a team, we, did, we knew environment, yeah, it's good, but we didn't know much about it. Um, and I think that through the work we've been doing, we have become concerned about what's happening and we've become passionate about it. And that's a journey that we want all South Africans to go on. We want people as individuals to be worried about their own futures and to be really worried about the futures of their kids and their grandkids. Because when I was a child, and I used to come to KZN for holidays, there wasn't any plastic on the beaches. But by the time my grandchildren come, they might not even be able to see these beaches anymore. And that will be a real tragedy, and I think that we want everybody to understand why we must look after this beautiful country that God gave us. South Africa is one of the top three mega biodiverse countries in the world. That means that South Africa has got more different kinds of ecosystems, more different kinds of species than almost every other country in the world. There's only two other countries that are the same as us, Brazil and Indonesia. So we have been given something precious and something special, and it is our duty to look after it for the generations that come after us. I love this project in Kwasi Izu. I love it because it's doing everything that we think about in our policy documents. It's dealing with the whole of the river system. It's not just worrying about where the plastic lands up, it's worrying about where it starts. It's dealing with everybody who's involved, the producers, the consumers, the victims of the pollution. That's the way to work, holistically, systematically. And the other thing I love is it's a five-year project. It's not a five-minute project. We all come down here, we clean the beach today, we go home, we pat ourselves on the back. Next week it looks exactly the same. So let me conclude where I began. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for starting this project. Thank you for your passion, Denzel. It's passion that's going to sort out this planet, and we need people like you. Thank you.